Jadis has lived in a small town in New Jersey for his entire life. And up until a few years ago, people in his community knew him as female. That is before he decided to step into his true authentic self, going through a transition from female to male. He encourages all of us to live with truth, kindness, and inclusion. Join me for Jadis' story. This is the Highway to Healing. I'm so excited to have you, Jadis, on my podcast. I am intrigued by you, your your story, and I know that you are going to open a lot of minds with what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So what has it been like going through your transition and going from female to male in your small town, Long Branch, New Jersey? Tell the listeners, what has it been like? Um, surprisingly, it's been pretty easy. I, I feel very lucky um, with how easily my transition has gone. I don't feel like I've lost any family or friends. And if I have, they weren't important enough for me to notice that they aren't around now. Um, I mean, it's been, it's, it's taken, it's, it's taught me a lot of patience. Um, It's taught me to, be accepting of other people and their circumstances as well that I may have normally been closed off to. Um, Accepting myself and the community that um, a part of me is involved in um, and just wanting to help other people in in the same situation as me. Wonderful. Um, I love that you take the approach of, you know, inclusivity and releasing judgment of other people, whether it's somebody who's in the same shoes as you are, or maybe there's something else they're going through in their life or, or a set of circumstances or choices that they've made. And now they're sitting there thinking, you know, what's going to be next for me? So I love your message of just being inclusive of all people, um, yeah. regardless of what their story includes. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit. So before you decided to do uh, your transition, you had shared with me that you were in a codependent relationship with somebody that was battling drug addiction and that that relationship really was a catalyst that led you to change. So whatever you feel comfortable sharing, talk about that time in your life and how it had created that moment for you to say, you know what? I'm going to do me now. So walk us through that. Um, so I met an amazing girl, still amazing. Um, a very big part of my life. Uh, we, we remain friends to this day. Um, like family almost. We met, we dated, and she struggled with her um, issues with addiction on and off. Um, at the time, I was still female. I hadn't transitioned yet. It's it's something that I I've considered since I was a child, um, but I just hadn't gone through the process yet or pushed myself to actually go through the process. Um, so through dating her and and trying to help her find herself and change herself, it became it turned into a codependent relationship, and and I feel like. Uh, I I lost a little, I was losing myself. And so I had to step back and take a minute and say like, hold on, like you need to change yourself. You know, like you are in a situation that you don't want to be in and you are a person that you don't want to be. She's in the same shoes, but in a different circumstance, you know? So it's like, I'm over, I'm living a life uh, that I, as a person that I don't, want to live my life as you know so instead of I I needed to like just push myself and tell myself like you need to make changes too before you try to help somebody else change their life so 
we ended up splitting up. Obviously, breakups in the beginning are, are not easy. They're not easy for anybody. Um, and then I think a month after we broke up, I was at the doctor's office um, starting to put the steps in place to start uh, hormone replacement therapy um, to transition. So, and then I, here I am, <laughs> you know? Yeah. As you think about the process and, and making that choice, and, and as you shared, it's something that you had felt since you were a child. And so here you are in this point in your life and you're like, okay, fine. I'm ripping the bandaid off. I'm going to do this. I'm going to step into being my true authentic self. And I applaud you for your courageousness. Mm -hmm. And as you go through that, and even as you sit here today and talk about your story, is there anything that stands out for you as something that maybe was surprising or something unexpected that you, you didn't really think about maybe, uh, as you had made that choice? Um, I am surprised at how much I've actually changed and grew throughout the process of transitioning. And it wasn't, it wasn't just about the outside physical appearance um, and those changes that happen, the all the confidence and and stuff that I regained within myself through the process of transitioning as well, and actually feeling like myself. I, I didn't realize how much I didn't feel like myself until until I mean I, I'm still I'm still finding parts of myself, and I think that's important for anybody to do whether you're transitioning or not is you need to really take time to learn yourself I'm still like I, I haven't been in a relationship since that relationship and that's almost four years ago because I'm still I'm so excited to continue to learn myself right now and and I'm always surprised by all the changes and 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 stuff that's happening within my life and the things that I used to accept when I was in a place with a lack of confidence and insecurities um, that I won't accept now in my, in my new life and as a new person that I am today. I love your point about learning who you are. You know, I, I feel so many people go through life being the version of themselves they think that everyone else needs them to be, uh, or, you know, they put their blindfold on and they don't want to see, you know, what's going on around them really. They kind of just skate or glide through life. Yeah. And I feel that you are this profound person and soul and energy that says, no, like you can be who you feel you are in your heart and in your core. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's going to take choice. It's going to take you standing up for yourself and saying, you know what? I am going to be authentic to myself. And yes, maybe I lose people along the way. Maybe somebody doesn't understand me all the way. Um, but my joy and happiness is worth more than trying to live my life for other people. Does that resonate? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and that's all within you. You, you have to be the one to decide that you want to change. And then you have to be the one to actually have the willpower to make those changes or else you're just going to sit in an unhappy place and in, in an unsatisfied place. And, and life can be happy. It can be satisfying. It can be fulfilling, but you have to take those steps to make it that way. Right. Were there times during your transition and even now maybe where you felt like what am I doing like I, where am I like I don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring because what comes to mind as I'm talking to you is there will be people listening that say you know I I do want to make a different choice I do want to be more authentic to myself but I just don't have any idea where to start because they're paralyzed with whatever fear it is that they have. Yeah. So do you have any like thoughts or tips or advice that you could even give people listening that, that are in maybe a position that you were in several years ago 
and they're trying to make a bold choice, but they don't really know how to get out of maybe this tunnel of fear that they're in. I kind of feel like your heart is always gonna, you always have a feeling in your heart of, of what you want to do, who you want to be in the direction you want to go in. And, and at some point you have to like blindly push the fear aside and just, just do it. Like I, when it came to taking the first steps into finding out where am I going to go for a doctor to transition and all that stuff, I, I reached out to someone that I grew up with and went to school with, but we never really uh, just, we never communicated while growing up. And I realized that um, this person transitioned as well. And I, I just, you know, reached out. I, I just, I did, I put the fear of being the person that I grew up as in my hometown and, and that I'm going to see these people every day, they're going to see my transition. Therefore they're going to be a part of my transition. And I just, I had to push that all aside. You just, just fucking let it go. You know, you have to, you can't let fear like hold you in a, in a, in a place, you know, you have to, you have to push forward. Great advice. Great advice. It sucks, uh, scary, but <laughs> you know, the, the good thing is, is that you do have a choice. Right. You do. And you can stay where you're at and, and live with that choice and have the feelings that you don't want to have that you're tired of experiencing, or you can say, you know what, I'm done. The yeah. pain point is so great that I am going to make a different choice to move forward. For sure. Yeah. I know that there are people which like blows my mind that are listening that maybe have never met somebody who's transgender. Maybe they have, and they just didn't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, the goal is to not know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so I would love to take a moment to educate our listeners, you know, what would be great for our audience to know about the transgender community or people that are going through transition? What advice or insight do you have for listeners on how people can be more kind or more understanding? This one is, is big to me um, because this is advice on both sides. I, I try to always come into a situation understanding both sides. It takes patience and understanding. I transitioned in my mid twenties, everyone for 20 years referring to me as a female. One day I transitioned to a male, you know? So as I'm transitioning, People are needing to learn how to transition with me as well into referring to me in, in a male, as a male figure now, you know, and it, it, I can't just cut someone out of my life or snap at them for mistaking my pronoun when, you know, it's just, it's a habit at this point. So it's like, it, it takes patience on both sides, you know, and it's just, try to be mindful, of course, the people on the other side, but it's like the person on my end too. be mindful of the fact that they're trying to accept who you are. Now they're trying to make your change as well. And they're, they're, as long as they're being respectful and actively correcting themselves and trying to make those changes, like you can't be so, so harsh on, on the people on the outside who don't understand what you're going through either, you know? So it takes, it takes a, it has to be a common ground from both ends. If someone, you know, isn't actively respecting your pronouns or, you know, isn't actively respecting the transition that you're going through, then again, you have a choice, just cut them out of your life. You know, it's not your job to, to force someone to understand what you're going through. If they don't want to understand, leave them alone. Don't, don't make that your stress because they are just stuck in their ways. Right. And you bring up a great point about pronouns. Uh, you know, most people are aware of he and she, 
Mm-hmm. And there are some people that want to be referred to as they or them. Yeah. Are there any other pronouns that we should bring to the table that people should be aware of? Or is there a great way to ask someone like, Hey, what do you want as your pronoun? You know, how do you want to be referred to? Is there a way to, to have that conversation? I think as long as people are being kind and being respectful and trying to understand that's step one, but if you could help even educate us on how to maybe ask about pronouns and what those would be, that would be great. I, when I go into a conversation with someone, um, I mean, I, I transition to a male. I like to be referred to as a male. I have male features. Um, so I think it's pretty easy and just the normalcy of someone coming into a conversation referring to me as a male. Um, if I personally want it to be referred to as something else, I think that I would maybe make that known to a person that I was conversing with that what I want it to be referred to as. Um, I, when I'm speaking with someone, I usually just try to use the general pronouns, uh, they and stuff like that, um, or just try to refer to the person by their name. Mm-hmm. Just to keep it like an overall, I don't, I, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not easily offended. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> call me whatever the hell you want to call me. <laughs> you know, I, I don't get offended easily, but I know that that's not, not everyone has the same mindset, you know? So I, I try to just go into it in a general way and just, you know, either refer to someone by their name if, if they make it known that they want to be referred to as something else, then you just, you try to move along in that direction. I agree. And I think uh, it's a great point because if you aren't sure, you can always ask, you know, sure. you can ask someone, you know, what is your preferred pronoun? And okay. if, if you're feeling stuck and I think as long as you're asking from a place of, I just want to be respectful, then if, usually it's okay. If you adamantly want to be referred to as something outside of what people are used to referring to people as, then you have to have the confidence and the ability to voice that. You can't expect people to come up to you and just automatically know that you want to be referred to as something else. That's people don't read minds, you know. That's why I'm saying it takes a. It, it, it's both ways that. There needs to be a, a common ground. If you want to be referred to as, as something else, voice that, you know, and give people an opportunity to adjust to it. Beautiful. I completely agree. And I know that you have been working with a doctor. You've been uh, in the cannabis industry previous to this project. And now you're working with this doctor on um, post-operative care. Yeah. And I think that that's fantastic. I'm curious to hear from you. What do you feel like your life mission is? Like, what is one of these goals that you feel like you were born to accomplish in this lifetime? Um, I am a problem solver. I always want to fix something, make something better, look better, work better. Um, I'm just, I always say never problems, only solutions. Um, I feel like if you are focused on a problem, you're part of the problem. So um, with this doctor, uh, Dr. Jonathan Keith, he's one of the leading plastic surgeons for trans care um, in New Jersey. Uh, He did my top surgery uh, back in 2018. Um, And after my surgery, you know, he's going over the steps of the post-operative care, um, what to do to tend to my, my scars. Um, and it just, it didn't work to the point where I just was like, screw this. I just want to have my shirt off and be in the sunshine, do whatever the hell I want. I don't want to wear a scar tape. I sweat like a maniac all the time. So this scar treatment, it it just, it didn't stick to me. Um, so what we're doing is we are creating a solution um, 
so that way people can tend to their scars. Doesn't matter what scar it is, you could have back surgery, knee surgery, a top surgery, anything. You'll be able to tend to your scars and do your daily activities without have to, having to worry about uh, the scar treatment falling off. That's a big deal. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, it'll change, I think, a lot of what people will have to deal with post-operation, regardless, as you said, of what kind of operation it is, but you're creating a solution to a problem that people have had. So I commend you for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have really enjoyed uh, speaking with you today and learning more about your story. Before we close out, is there anything else that you want to share with the listeners today I, I know that you have been bold and courageous and you've encouraged listeners to do the same, even when it might not be the easiest choice or thing to do, regardless of what it is they're facing in their life. So if you could just uh, give us a, a couple of uh, final thoughts, that would be great. Um, I mean, I definitely want to, uh, I guess go back to the point of taking time to learn yourself and learn who you are. And that does take a lot of alone time. Be alone in your own head, learn the things that you like, learn the things that you don't like, and then change those things that you don't like and try to make a better life and a better mental situation for yourself. It's been a very hard year for a lot of people, for the entire world. Um, and I mean, I think taking time to really learn yourself and, and how to make yourself happy and, and to make sure that you keep a good head on your shoulders is a very, very, very important thing. Beautifully stated, beautifully stated. Jadis, thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. To connect with Jadis or to speak with him about transgender mentorship, visit him on Instagram. The link is in our show notes. Stories like this one are important to tell. It reminds us that even during the darkest times, we can always find light. We can always choose faith over fear. For exclusive content, please join my Spark Club members only community and apply to be a guest on this show. Find out more at spiritandspark.com.